Sir, of the Volvo 2021 Figo updates is the topic of our discussion today. Vulval cancer is an uncommon gynecological malignancy primarily affecting postmenopausal women. By uncommon, we mean that it is present in 1 in 100 to 1 in 1000 women. There is no specific screening and the most effective strategy to reduce the vulval cancer incidence is the opportune treatment of predisposing and preneoplastic lesions associated with its development. While vulval cancer may be asymptomatic, most women present with vulval pruritus or pain or have noticed a lump or ulcer. Therefore, any suspicious vulval lesion should be biopsied to exclude the invasion. Once established, the most common subtype is squamous cell carcinoma. There have been some changes in the terminology of vulval intraepithelial neoplasia from 2004 to 2012. When one was previously called flat condyloma or HPV effect and the latest terminology is low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. When two or three, which were called when usual type, are now called high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Differentiated type is now called the differentiated vulval intraepithelial lesion or neoplasia. Now this is very important slide showing the FIGO staging 2021. In stage 1 vulval cancer, the tumor is confined to vulva. 1a tumor size of equal to or less than 2 cm and stromal invariant of equal to or less than 1 mm. 1b tumor size of more than 2 cm or stromal invariant of more than 1 mm. In stage 2, the tumor is of any size with extension to lower one-third of urethra, lower one-third of the vagina, lower one-third of the anus and negative lymph nodes. In stage 3, the tumor is of any size with extension to upper part of adjacent perineal structures or with any number of non-fixed, non-ulcerated lymph nodes. In 3A, the tumor is of any size with disease extension to upper two-third of urethra, upper two-third of the vagina, bladder mucosa, rectal mucosa or regional lymph node metastasis of less than 5 mm. So, just remember upper UVA is involved in the stage 3 while lower UVA was involved in stage 2. UVA means urethra, vagina and anus. In stage 3b, there is regional lymph node metastasis of more than 5 mm. In stage 3c, the regional lymph node metastasis with extra capsular spread is there. In stage 4, there is tumor of any size fixed to bone or fixed ulcerated lymph node metastasis or distant metastasis. In stage 4a, the disease is fixed to pelvic bone or fixed or ulcerated regional lymph nodes metastasis. In 4B, there is distant metastasis. The treatment of vulval cancer depends primarily on histology and surgical staging. Treatment is predominantly surgical, particularly for squamous cell carcinoma, although concurrent chemoradiation is an effective alternative, especially for the advanced tumors. Management should be individualized and carried out by multidisciplinary team in a cancer center experienced in the treatment of these tumors. Vulval cancer accounts for only 4% of gynecological malignancies. Squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva is the most common subtype and has traditionally been regarded as the disease of postmenopausal women, although the mean age of the incidence has fallen in the recent years. The common risk factors include ethnic distribution, smoking, atrophy or inflammation, and the prevalence of HIV. The anatomy of external genitalia is also a little bit explained in these updates. The external genitalia comprise the vulva, the mons pubis, or the pubic area. The vulva is an anterior triangle of perineum. The elements that make up the vulva include labia majora, minora, clitoris, bulb of the vaginal vestibule and the lesser or skin glands and the greater or botulin glands and vestibular glands. Lymphatic drainage from the vulva is primarily to inguinofemoral region and secondarily to the external and internal iliac region. 
The primary prevention is by HPV vaccination because as for the cervical premalignant lesion, the predominant risk factor in this case is also the persistent HPV infection, particularly HPV 16 subtype. The secondary prevention is by screening and appropriate examination of the woman for pre-malignant lesions like uh, lichen sclerosis and squamous intraepithelial lesions. And the tertiary prevention is the management of these pre-malignant lesions. Now, there are two main pathological pathways that lead to vulval squamous cell carcinoma. And those include, first of all, keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, which usually occur in the older women. Second is warty bacillite squamous cell carcinoma, which occurs in young women and is caused by persistent infection with oncogenic strains of HPV. Currently, the lesions arising from the vulva and anus are all included with the common name of lower anogenital squamous intraepithelial lesions. Under this classification, three subtypes are distinguished for the vulva. The three subtypes include low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, and the differentiated variant. To date, there is no definitive treatment for the conditions such as lichen sclerosis. The cornerstone measures include avoiding exposure to precipitating factors which include trauma by the local irritants, occlusive moist environment, and the use of potent and ultra-potent topical corticosteroids. The alternative options include the use of topical calcineurin inhibitors or tacrolimus, retinides, and photodynamic therapy. Surgical treatment was previously restricted to excision of scars in women where scanning had led to the functional impairment. The recent studies indicated the potential benefit of mesenchymal stem cell including adipose derived stem cell and autologous platelet rich plasma in the treatment of lichen sclerosis. The differentiated vulval intraepithelial uh, neoplasia represents less than 5% of preneoplastic lesion of the vulva. However, it is characterized by a higher rate of progression to squamous vulval carcinoma. It is rarely associated with persistent HPV infection less than 2%. And the axion with 0.5 to 1 cm margins constitutes the treatment of choice. The management of high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion include simple excision. Excision has the advantage of excluding invasion. An alternative option include ablation. The less destructive option include the use of imiquimod 5%. Moderate quality evidence shows that response rate with imiquimod and cedofovir means another topical treatment are similar at six months compared with the surgical management or laser vaporization. There is very little evidence of the effectiveness of topical treatment. There is risk of recurrence of up to 30 to 40 percent. The follow-up is recommended for at least two to three years. In the management of vulval cancer, it's important to know about the anatomy of disease spread. Malignant tumors of vulva should be histologically conformed and are classified as such when the primary site of origin of the tumor is the vulva. Among the lymph nodes, inguinal and femoral are the first sites of spread followed by the pelvic lymph nodes. If the metastatic sites include the pelvic lymph nodes or extra pelvic spread, these are considered to be stage 4. Vulval cancer has been surgically staged since 1988 and the final diagnosis is based on histological evaluation of vulva and lymph node specimens. The histological types include squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, verrucous carcinoma, adenocarcinoma related to extra memory, Bagot's disease, Bartholin gland carcinoma and the sarcoma. Histological grades include grade X or 0 in which grade cannot be assessed. 
grade 1 is well differentiated grade 2 is moderately differentiated and grade 3 is poorly or undifferentiated type as far as treatment is concerned it is predominantly surgical particularly for the squamous cell carcinoma although concurrent chemo radiation is an effective alternative particularly for the advanced tumors it's very important that management of each patient should be individualized and carried out by a multidisciplinary team in a cancer-centered experienced doctor's team. Moreover, psychosexual counseling services should be available to all women with the pre-invasive and invasive vulvar diseases. When we talk about the management of squamous cell carcinoma, it's very important to know about the presenting symptoms which include the vulval pruritus or pain and the lumps or the ulcers. Any suspicious vulvar lesion should be biopsied to exclude the invasion. If the diameter of the lesion is 2 cm or less and the depth of the stromal invasion is less than or equal to 1 mm on initial biopsy, it is usual to do radical wide local excision of the lesion to assess the maximum depth of invasion. The investigations include first of all the cervical cytology and colposcopy of the cervix and vagina if applicable due to association of HPV related cancers with other squamous intraepithelial lesions. Moreover, the blood complete picture, MRI are important but before MRI we go for the chest x-ray, the ultrasound of the pelvis and if that indicate certain lesions or other pathologies we go for ct or mri for the appropriate staging moreover the fluorodeoxyglucose and pat ct are more effective to detect the inguinofemoral lymph node involvements now we will talk about the surgical management of vulval squamous cell carcinoma Surgical management of vulvar cancer should be individualized and the most conservative operation that will result in the cure of the disease should be performed. Microinvasive vulvar cancer is stage 1a. In 1a, the lesion is up to 2 cm in size with a stromal invasion of up to 1 mm and no nodal metastasis. The management is by wide local excision. In stage 1b, the lesion is of more than 2 cm in size with a stromal invasion of more than 1 mm and no nodal metastasis. Management is by radical vulvectomy plus minus sentinel lymph node procedure. Early vulvar cancer are those which are confined to vulva and where there is no suspicion of the lymph nodes involvement either on clinical examination or on imaging. The gold standard of treatment for early vulvar cancer is wide local excision of the tumor. Advanced vulvar cancer include the tumors that extend beyond the vulva and or where there are bulky positive grind lymph nodes. When confronted with the advanced vulvar cancer, ideally the status of the groin nodes should be determined before the treatment is planned. If there are no suspicious nodes, either clinically or on imaging, bilateral inguinofemoral lymphadenectomy may be performed if the nodes are negative. Radiotherapy to the groins and pelvic nodes will not be necessary. In cases where surgery is thought to be inappropriate for individual patients, the primary chemoradiation may be used to treat the primary tumor as well as groin and the pelvic nodes. Ulcerated or fixed groin lymph nodes should be biopsied to confirm the diagnosis and then treated with the primary radiotherapy with or without chemosensitization. In terms of the management of the primary tumor, surgical excision of the primary tumor with a clear surgical margins and without sphincter damage where possible constitute the optimal way to treat the advanced vulval cancer. If adequate excision of the primary tumor can only be achieved by exenteration and the formation of the bowel and urinary stoma, the radiotherapy with or without concurrent chemotherapy may be preferred treatment alternative. Concurrent chemoradiation is well described treatment alternative for those patients with large tumors in whom the primary surgical resection would damage the central structures. 
Neuroadjuvant treatment with cisplatin and 5-fluorouracil has been reported to be effective for the preservation of NL sphincter and or urethra in patients with advanced vulval cancer. The radiotherapy to the groin lymph nodes is considered in patient with advanced vulval cancer. High risk areas may be boosted either with oppositional fields of electrons or with external beam radiotherapy. The targeted therapies are preferred nowadays because there are a host of possible targets for molecular therapies in the vulval carcinoma. It's important to close the surgical margins because most vulvar cancer recurrences occur on the vulva. The management of recurrent disease is often difficult and the treatment options depend on the site of the recurrence, the performance status of the patient and what previous treatment has been given to the patient. Women with gynecological malignancies are seen every 3 to 6 months for the first 2 years and then every 6 to 12 months until they are 5 years post-treatment. The rare malignancies are also explained in 2021 vulval cancer updates. Vulvar melanoma is the second most common vulval malignancy. The Bartholin gland carcinoma or rare form of the vulvar malignancy accounting for 5% of the vulvar cancer. The extra memory pegate disease is rare and can affect the apocrine glands of the vulva. The treatment of choice for intraepithelial pegate disease is wide local excision. If an underlying adenocarcinoma is present, the treatment should be radical, wide local excision with a margin of at least 1 cm. When we talk about the pathological considerations in relation to the specimen analysis, these points should be noted. First is the correct orientation of the surgical specimen, which is very important. Secondly, the photograph should be taken of the whole specimen. The measurements include the size of the specimen, the dimensions of any visible tumor, the macroscopic tumor-free margins, and the tumor depth. The lymph nodes should be dissected out and a full cross-section of each lymph node should be embedded. These histo histological points are also very noteworthy, which include the tumor type, the depth of the invasion, the tumor grade, the tumor-free margin, presence or absence of perineal space invasion, the nature of adjacent squamous epithelium and the size and the number of nodes examined. Thank you so much. That was all about 2021 FIGO updates vulval cancer. Subscribe on Ops and Gaini. Allah Hafiz.